In today's video, we are gonna transform a data table into this visualization using a little bit of creativity in Excel. So let's get straight onto things and take a closer look at that table. We are looking at product sales amounts across 18 different products, A to R. These products are sold at a number of our stores. The goal is to understand the sales in our flagship store. Grand Mart relative to the other stores. Being the flagship store, it should generally be the best performing. I wonder, how long would it take you to confirm that hypothesis from this table? Likely too long. And that's where visualizing data can be extremely helpful because it taps into our visual communication system, which essentially means we can see those shapes, patterns, and trends far faster than by reading them from a table. Now, when I have a large element of categorical data, as in this example, one of my go-to chart options to consider is the dot plot. What I'm imagining is a view that shows the minimum and maximum sales for the other stores. With that range established, I can layer on the grand mart and see where it sits compared with the other stores. In a previous video, I've shared a little bit more around dot plots, plus a couple of different ways we can make them in Excel. I'll share that link in the description below. So for today, we are gonna focus primarily on the specific techniques to allow us to add a shaded range and put the value within it. Now, unfortunately, dot plots aren't a standard chart type in Excel, so we are gonna use a little bit of creativity to build it. Let me walk you through my steps now. To create our base dot plot, we'll insert a scatter plot and then add the data. With our blank chart, we can right click and then select data. And we wanna add a data series for each of our stores. For the X values, we'll select the sales values and the Y values will be what we have in column Q. This essentially allows us to tell Excel where we want to plot our dots both horizontally and vertically. Now, if we do this for the remaining four stores, we have the beginnings of our dot plot. At this stage, I want to do a little formatting just to make things clearer. Right at the outset, I'm going to remove the chart border and grid lines, both vertical and horizontal, to aid the processing of the sales values, I'm going to move the x-axis labels to the top of the view. To ensure we can see the dots, I'm going to increase the marker size for each of the stores before we ensure focus on Grand Mart by using color for this one store only. Finally, I want to make sure this marker is on top of all the other data points by changing the series order. Before I move on, I'm going to remove the default legend and chart title and place my own versions using text boxes at the top of the view and adjusting the formatting of my x-axis labels just to make them larger, adding tick marks and a line and including the currency denomination. At this point, you might be wondering about the y-axis labels. Zero to 10 isn't particularly helpful when we are referring to specific products. One more column of data will help us with this. In column R, you'll see we have a series of values all set to minus 250. This value represents where we will be positioning our labels on the horizontal axis. To add our labels, we can select the data, add a new data series, name equals labels. For our X values, choose the values in column R, and for the Y values, the values we have in column Q. Now we have a data point for each of our values, we can format that point. First of all, I'll add some data labels. And within the formatting options for those labels, I'm going to find the labels contains selections. I'm going to tick value from cells and select the values represented in column K, and then untick the Y value and show leader line options. I'm now going to format the text to my preferences, position the labels to the left hand side, and then within the data point itself, look at the marker options and turn the marker selection to none. Now all we need to do is hide the axes. Within our format axes options, we can select label, label position, and then none. And the paint bucket icon gives us access to the line formatting. Here I'm selecting line and then finally no line. As yet, we don't see much evidence of this shaded range of data that I mentioned before. So let's address that now using a couple of additional columns of data and the clever use of error bars. We've now added to the data set a couple of new columns titled POS and NEG. Now these are the formulas that represent the minimum and maximum sales value differences from our flagship store, Grand Mart. Taking the example of product A, we can see here that Grand Mart has a sales value of $2,884. 
Now the store with the maximum of sales for this product is Elite Good, which has sales of 169, more than Grand Mart. So our range will need to extend in a positive direction for that amount. In the other direction, the lowest performing store for this product, Metro Hub, with $1,743, is $1,141 behind Grand Mart. These values are going to inform how long our error bars should be. That's the theory behind it. Let's go ahead and build it. To start off, we will click on the Grand Mart data markers. Then we'll click Chart Design and add a chart element. In this case, that will be our error bars. We want to select standard error bars for this. We'll delete the vertical error bars that have been automatically added. And then with our remaining horizontal bars, we want to format them. Starting off to select the direction, we want both ways for our direction. The end style should be no cap and the error amount, we want to select custom and a specific set of values. Now in the dialog box that presents itself, for the positive values, we'll select the range in column S and for the negative values, we'll select the range in column T. Now we have our line. All we need to do now is a little bit of formatting. Let's increase the size of the line to 17.5. For the cap type, let's choose round, and we'll select a light gray as the line color. Here is our final shaded range representing our minimum and maximum values and the grand mark displayed prominently within it. If you prefer an even more minimal approach and don't need to see the individual detail of the other stores, then we can simply remove them as data series. With this view, I can scan the patterns of the data and retrieve the key insights much faster than in the original table. Now we can quickly see that our flagship store, Grand Mart, is mostly on the lower end of the range when compared to other stores. And with the exception of product G, never at the maximum end of things. Being our flagship store, this is certainly an area that warrants action. We could bring attention to this with a well-crafted takeaway title and recommendation. Using a little creativity in Excel, we've managed to create a visualization that allows our audience to retrieve those insights far easier than having to read them from a table and ultimately take action. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking to boost your Excel skills further, then check out our dedicated playlist, which offers more tips, tricks, and resources. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.